Okay, time for another Cool Dude Clems electronic workshop with his extremely overexposed camera. Welcome to Cool Dude Clems electronic workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So, anyway, I've decided to revisit the Super Het radio and hopefully get this working this time. So, I've rebuilt it up on the board. Now, Stefan0719 has given me some great tips which I'm going to try out. He built my circuit up in one of his videos and he got it to work. He just changed a few parts and worked absolutely fine. So hopefully mine is going to work. So what I've been, anyway, I've been experimenting with oscillators that I could use as a local oscillator. So I've got one here that I built with a tube just for the heck of it. And here's the one that you saw in another video. And also behind it, over here is just one that I've thrown together and we'll see how each one works. Well, we'll see how well each one works. So, let's turn on the power and see how well the tube works. You can see that's lighting up in any second now. It should start oscillating. There's very few components in this oscillator. There's the tube, the tuning capacitor. There it goes. So I've got a tube, tuning capacitor, a local oscillator coil that I got out of another circuit board. And of course, here's the schematic. I know it looks like I've put the two grids in the wrong way around. I haven't. That's the particular way you wire up one of these tubes because it's a special low voltage tube. It's actually in the data sheet to connect them up that way. So it's not my stupidity. So let's try to measure the frequency of this thing. We've got about 5.9 megahertz, so could use that as a local oscillator. I'm just going to turn this on the other way. So it is at its lowest frequency. Let's measure that again, because measuring here it doesn't shift the frequency at all. And we're about 4.1 megahertz. Right, well, let's move over to this oscillator. Take clip. There, and clip that onto here. So, this is all faithful here. This oscillator circuit, it's not quite as high output as the tube. So, I have to let's see what our frequency is at the moment. We have about 4.2 megahertz. I'm going to turn this down a little. So, 3.6 megahertz. I'm going to turn this up all the way. And we're at 12 megahertz. So that one works really well. And for those of you interested, here is the waveform on the scope. This is at 12 megahertz. This is all the way down as far as it can go before it stops, which is about 3.5 megahertz. And that one works really good. Okay, so here we are using this little circuit. This is also one of Stefano 0719's circuits. This is the local oscillator circuit that he used in one of his radios. I just decided to build it up very roughly and see if it works, and indeed it does, because I wanted to see if it would work with just a coil connected, just to see if there's enough parasitic capacitance in the circuit to make it oscillate, and of course, well, there obviously is, because you can see it on the scope right there. So I might try the coil and tuning cap out of this on there and see how well that works at the moment. Let's just see if I can measure the frequency here. We got about 1.3 megahertz. Though I think that might frequency might have drifted when I did that. Although it actually hasn't drifted at all. Well, very little frequency drift when I do that. As you can see, the frequency doesn't really change. The waveform just gets a bit smaller. I'm, out. I'm curious about something now. I wonder if this would work with a crystal. I've got a 10 megahertz crystal here. Don't know where my 4.3 month one is gone. It's somewhere around. I saw it earlier today, but I'm going to unplug the coil. Unplug the coil. Put in the crystal. Ah, yes. It does work. Alright then, 
I got the coil and the tuning capacitor connected to this little circuit and it works. So let's see what kind of frequency range we get from this. I turn the meter on. Hopefully we can take a measurement this time. I'll just measure right here and we got 3.2 megahertz. Let's see what the highest frequency we can get from this is. Didn't seem to shift that much. 5 megahertz. But I think for my local oscillator, I'm just going to connect it back up to this and use that because I get the most range out of that. So that's what I'm going to go for. <laughs> okay then, let's take a closer look at the circuit that I've built. So we've got five stages in this circuit. Over here is the input stage, the RF amplifier. So the antenna connects here to this capacitor. Then it goes into this coil and this capacitor and this end of the coil is connected to ground and this end of the capacitor goes into the transistor there and this stage here is the mixer this is where the local oscillator will be connected this is the IF amplifier and here is the demodulator and audio amplifier and to demodulate the signal I've just used an ordinary 1N4148 diode and apparently if you connect the anode to a resistor I've used a 1 mega ohm resistor and connect that to the positive that will give the diode enough bias and it will work just as good as a germanium diode so when I connect my local oscillator and I've got it tuned to the right frequency we should hear a radio station or two Okay, so I'm going to try to align this thing now. Even though I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, I'm not even sure if this is the right way to do it. I've taken out the antenna coil, so I don't get thrown off by whatever the antenna coil's resonant frequency is. I've got this function generator, which is a square wave generator, and I know I should be using a sine wave generator, so don't mention it. This is the only circuit I've got that can oscillate from absolutely 0 hertz to up to about 1.3 megahertz. And I'm probing the output just before the demodulator. And I've got a long piece of wire connected to my oscillator, which is acting as an antenna. Anyway, this other long wire is going into the receiver, picking up the output from this thing, which my scope is seems to be refusing to trigger on so anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this until I get the highest output and oh yes the the local oscillator even though it's connected it's not powered at the moment so that's not doing anything so that's not gonna interfere either tune this until I find the highest and cleanest output Okay, it looks like right about here, I'd say. Yep, right about there. That's where I'd say the highest output is. Don't know why the camera's seeing a waveform that's jumping about, and well, to me, it's not jumping about, but I'm gonna measure the frequency, man going to measure the frequency, so put my meter probe here, and that's about 303 kilohertz, so I'd say the IF frequency of this is about 303 kilohertz, and I don't really care what the IF frequency is, just as long as it works, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to adjust the variable capacitors, so both of these coils have the same resonant frequency, and we'll know we've hit the resonant frequency when the waveform on the scope gets really big. So I'm going to adjust this one first. Which uh, seems to be right about there. And now I'm going to adjust this one. seems to be about there. Okay, so I think the two stages are aligned. So the next thing to do is put my coil back in 
and see if we can pick up any radio stations and hopefully it's going to work. I'm keeping every part of my body crossed here. It's not looking good. No matter what I do, I just cannot seem to get any sign of a radio station. So I tune the local oscillator, I can hear some very faint whistling noises, like you would get sometimes when you tune a radio. but no sign of any kind of a radio station. I really had high hopes for this. I thought today is the day I'm gonna get this thing working and it still doesn't work. Well I was about to give up on this thing again until it started talking. Yes, it's actually picking up something as you can probably hear. I I don't know what language that is, I think that's German, but I'm not exactly sure. But I know that is heterodyning, because, or whatever the word is, because when I tune this, oh, station seems to have gone, it sort of drifts in and out. Alright, if I tune this, station disappears. Right there. Got it back. Anyway, I'm probably something boring they're talking about, but that to me is the sound of success. Anyway, next thing I want to do is try out this little transmitter circuit and see how well that works. Well, what can I say but success? I've got an audio source hooked up to this very crudely made transmitter that transmits at about 4.3 megahertz and if I tune it in, you will hear music there it is, right there hopefully you can hear me over it strange thing is, that one seems to come in two places at once there it is right there And there it is again. Alright, better not take too much of that because I don't know if I'm going to get screwed for copyright over that. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of tinkering. I've changed the antenna coil to this little toroid coil. It's about 30 micro Henry. And I've also removed the capacitor that connects the antenna to the coil. So now the antenna is just connected directly to the coil, as you can see in the schematic here. And I'm quite happy to say it's pulling in a lot more stations now.
Bună dimineața! Bună ziua! Bună seara! Noapte bună! La revedere! Acum începem o nouă lecție de română. Okay, I've changed the antenna coil yet again with this random coil that I had in my parts box. I've also changed the resistor on the RF amplifier to 100k, and before it was 47k. Anyway, with this coil, I was able to receive two radio stations, and they came in really strongly. Well, one of them came in really strongly, the other one not so much, but still much better than what I was getting before. And also, notice how I've got the antenna coil at right angles to the local oscillator coil. It's very important so they don't feed back to each other. But anyway, without further ado, here are the two radio stations. This is the Beijing Hour, one hour of news and information brought to you by China Radio International. Spencer Music with you on this Sunday morning. Still to come here on the Beijing Hour. In our weekly SciTech feature, a cure for genetic deafness taking shape at a laboratory in Boston Children's Hospital. And falls, China falls to Japan. So anyway, that seems to go pretty well, and I'm quite happy with that. I might revisit this at a later date, but I've got some other things to do, and I've got to edit this video, and I'm dreading editing all the footage. It's going to take me forever. But anyway, that's it for me, so yeah, till next time, goodbye, and um, until next time, goodbye.